Well, we have a guest tonight whose face will be uh, familiar to almost everybody watching, and uh, that is part of his stock and trade, but perhaps his most uh, uh, important stock and trade is that he's a great actor. Anthony Quayle, welcome to Montage. Thank you. You know, when I look at you, I, uh, as I told you just before we started the interview, I think of the guns of Navarone, and I hesitate to tell that to you because I'm afraid that you'll be a little offended that Why? you want to be thought of as Hamlet or no. some great Shakespearean... I, I, play. I'm happy to be thought of as anything, I mean, whether, <laughs> whether it's as a movie actor or a stage actor. Well, I do think people who, who are not actors tend to think that actors want to be known as Shakespearean performers. Now, why do we think that? Well, I guess because I, um, Shakespeare, I think, is the Himalayas of our, of our job, and therefore they are the most difficult mountains to climb. And uh, so naturally, you'd, uh, you'd hope to uh, achieve some reputation as climbing Mount Everest or catching Jungo or something and yeah. not skidding around on the foothills. How do you look upon acting? I know it's, it's your way of life. It's, you've devoted your life to it. Uh, how do you look at it as a craft? Is it a communication art to you to, to tell people something? Or, or is it something you just earn a living at that no, you no. enjoy? No, <coughs> no. I don't know. I think it's all, to, yes, it's all to do with communication. It is all, I, oh, it's an enormous subject to go into, isn't it? It's, uh, it's an interpretation of, of, of great literature, if, if you're doing Shakespeare, or even if you're doing lesser um, playwrights. It's uh, interpreting them. It is uh, trying to flesh out, to, to embody all kinds of life. You know, if the proper study of mankind is man, well, then we're right at the, at the heart of it all. Well, what bothers me is that uh, uh, drama is considered entertainment. Now, entertainment to me doesn't, doesn't say what I think dramatic presentations do. It's more than entertainment. It's telling you something. It has a message. Uh, the message, but, but what is confusing, I think, is that today, Theater, films, whatever you call it, yeah. it ent this entertainment is—it is two things. It is an art, and it is a business. It's both. When you were a little boy, did you want to be an actor? Yes, I did. Always? I wanted to be one. From uh, I guess I never thought it was possible that I could be, but I should think from the age of thirteen onwards. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, By the time was I was fifteen, your, I knew. Your family was in the business. Nothing or? to do with it. Really? Absolutely nothing. What I, did your I father do? My father was a lawyer. Oh. A poor old thing. He was a rather drunken lawyer. Really? Yeah. Is he still living? No. Oh no, no, no. He 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 <laughs> he went a long time ago. Poor old thing. Did he know you wanted to be an actor? Yes. Still, and what did he think of that? He, oh, he thought that was very risky and uh, very audacious. And uh, but he didn't have. He was too sozzled really to have much influence one way or the other. My father. Now you're saying this with some <laughs> flippancy, but I guess there's more. There's some. Some deep feeling too about the, the, your father being a drunken lawyer, as you refer to. Well, I, to I used to have not very much respect for him when I was little, and now that I'm a lot older, I have a great kind of. I, 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 he was a very gentle man, and uh, he couldn't really cope with life, and he took to the bottle in a big way, and I have uh, a, a sort of compassion for the silly old thing. That you, that you couldn't have when you were young. I couldn't have it when I was young. It's only now that I'm middle-aged I know how difficult life is. I, I have great sympathy with people who take to the bottle, and I wish I could say to my father, oh, well, forget all those whiskey bottles on the top of the cupboard. Yes, I understand. It's too bad you can't go back. Yeah, well, there you are. That's it. Well, now, do you have children? Yes. Now, how does that affect how you treat them, or does it? Your memory of your father and your changing attitude? I don't know. That, I don't know. I'm, I don't think about it. I don't think what my father did or didn't do. Oh, I, I just try and live spontaneously with them. They're fine. It seems to work all right. right. Mind you, they've got a good mother. That's right. Now, do they want to be actors? One of them. Really? Yes. My boy was very funny because he was, uh, he's, he's, uh, when he was about 14, I remember walking down a street in London. He was going through that terribly reticent, silent stage when all fathers and parents and mothers, they go through hell because they think, oh, God, will <laughs> little Charlie ever speak to us? I mean, <laughs> will he communicate at all? Well, he was going through that stage. And um, I was trying to figure out wh which way to steer him, you know, as far as school and yeah. education is concerned. 
And I, I thought that maybe because he never spoke about the theatre, although he, you know, he lives at home and um, he knows that I'm mixed, uh, mixed up in it up to here, yeah. I thought maybe that this was a secret ambition of his, maybe. So one day I said to him, walking along the street, I said, Chris, now, I, I just wonder, do you think when you grow up, maybe it's something at the back of your mind, would you like to be something to do with the theatre? An, an actor, for example. And he stopped dead in his tracks. And he looked up at me and he said, Dad, that is the last thing I would ever be. Really? <laughs> so that put me right in my place. <laughs> well, why do you think he said that? It has I a, think he meant it. He's a, he's a, he means but, what he said. But that has a negative feeling to it. Has your life kind of turned him off? Well, no, I think he wants, <clears> to, be, he wants to be a painter. A painter? Yes. Right. Yeah, he's at art school. Anyhow, that's another story. Yeah. Well, how does all that affect you, or does it, uh, when a child says that to you? Do you think, gee, why would he... <laughs> no, would what can be? you do? <laughs> no, you mustn't worry too much. They say a lot of funny things and do a lot of funny things. You, you just got to... Let's talk about <clears throat> Shakespeare for a moment. Why, uh, we all re re repeat like, like uh, monkeys that he's a great playwright, and of course he, he was. Why? How could that man have been so incisive and, uh, and uh, well, let me ask you another question first. Do you think that that he had a ghostwriter as being, no, being I don't, suggested? No, absolutely Has that not. been settled once and for all? No, and it'll never be settled. I don't think unless they find something in his handwriting or that. No. But to me, there's absolutely no, no question. No. Of course he wrote them. How can it be that no one has really equaled him in all these years? That, that seems remarkable. Was he just at the right place at the right uh, time to create? Uh, uh, you can't explain genius. How do you explain Beethoven? There are certain men, very, very few men through the history of man, who are like lightning conductors. And they, they yes, you can analyze it, and you can say that he lived at a time when there was an enormous flowering yeah. of, of everything. Uh, he, he was the sort of a late Renaissance man. Well, you've only got to look at all the other Renaissance characters. What extraordinary right. men they were, all of them. There was something busting out in the whole, in the whole of that uh, European world at that time. And Shakespeare, he, 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 there, there it was. And, um, but why is he so extraordinary? Because of the psychology is, is unerring. I mean, Freud was, a, was, was almost the, his passion was, was Shakespeare. He was the greatest psychoanalyst that, that you could find. He's extraordinary. And the subtlety and the unerring truth of, of the way people behave. Then the great language in which it's done. And then the, the remarkable dramatic form. I mean, even down to practical details which the public aren't concerned with. Right. But after, um, uh, 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 as far as handling the mechanics are concerned, that after a scene, where an actor is exhausted and panting and his heart is thumping and he's gasping for breath a bit, some big, big scene, you have a gap. You, he gives you five minutes to pull yourself together before you have another one. Going back to my high school days, being forced to read Shakespeare, and it was the most Awful. tedious, so did laborious I. Awful. thing to do, I can yes. imagine. Uh, it was for you too? Oh, I awful. expected you to, to think the oh, poor, deprived chap. Right? Dreadful, <laughs> dreadful. Really? I hated it. Yeah. I didn't hate it, but I hated that. I resented the labor. I, I, although uh, at that age, you know, f 14, 15, I had never seen any v very good Shakespeare ever done. Yeah. It didn't hit me till I was, I think, 16 and a half, 17. I'd only seen it done very badly and studied it, but I suspected at the age of 14, 15 that behind some of these speeches there must be something thrilling and exciting and dramatic. And I resented having to sit down and analyze it and, and uh, what was the meaning of this word and what was the early Elizabethan, oh, just yeah. awful, and take exams. And it, it was a thing to be enjoyed and to laugh at or get excited about. Well, we're running out of time. Oh, I, I, must, I, I must tell you, now, that's, that's a true revelation. If your children are with you right now watching, you've just heard the, one of the great Shakespearean actors say he found it boring in high school. Oh, yes, I, poor children. I, they ought to be protected I from think. Shakespeare till they're 16, I think. I, School teachers arise. Thank you, Anthony <laughs> Quayle, very much for being here with us. Thank you. We'll be right back.